Earlier this year, I was sent a review copy of Life on Mars for the Sega Genesis, an indie project that was born from a previous MSX aftermarket title in 2016 and an upgraded PC release that following year. It was developed by Kai Magazine Software, who had also made other Genesis indie projects like Metal Dragon. I was so busy that Life on Mars slipped to the back burner and I completely ignored it for a few months. In the last few weeks I sat down to give it a proper play session and came away enjoying the experience overall. In this episode we are going to go over some of its features, what it looks and sounds like, and discuss my findings after a few hours playing it. I'm going to try and keep spoilers to a minimum, so if you haven't played it yet, you're going to be safe from here on out. I hope you guys enjoy Life on Mars for the Sega Genesis. The story begins simple enough. You've lost contact with a research colony on Mars and are sent in to see what's going on. After some brief text-based cinematics, you land and your journey begins. You'll see this described as a Metroid clone in many places. It certainly has some Metroid influences, but this has hints of many types of games, most prominently survival horror mixed with a bit of Turrican. Things start out with you toting around a super weak pea shooter that uses an auto recharging power bar. You'll find this extremely disconcerting at first. The opening stage has bullet sponge robots that take entirely too many hits to kill. You may even die a few times. Don't worry though because the game does a good job in helping guide you along the way, even reminding you where you should be going and what places to avoid. Aside from being able to jump, you can also shoot upwards horizontally and vertically so you can hit enemies all around you. There's a map that tracks your progress and shows you info about your weapons and your suit. After getting a handle on the controls, you'll start to find upgrade stations where you can make your weapons and shields stronger and far more useful. This is done by using the little power cells that the enemies drop. Not only is this currency, but it also recharges your shields. You'll also find new weapons and powers as you explore, which will then allow you to access areas you couldn't before. There are half a dozen areas to explore, find power-ups for your suit, and collect some very useful weapons. The story unfolds as you hit communication stations that also double as your save points. It's not a long game, but you will need to grind power cells in order to upgrade your weapons to defeat the rather vicious boss encounters. These guys pop out filling the screen with death and destruction. There's no complicated patterns here to follow, it's all about who hits who the quickest. Life on Mars is a good looking indie title in an average looking Genesis game. Meaning among the usual indie expectations, I think it's animated well, and the sprites look the part. But the backgrounds are a tad washed out, and on the simple side. Everything feels like it could use a little more color, and a few more details here and there. I did appreciate the parallax in places, and a few of the weapon effects look fantastic. The environment is meant to be hopeless, even desolate and it definitely succeeds there. Overall, I think it does the job well for the atmosphere it presents. It's not going to win any best of awards for these visuals, but it also won't be on any worst of list either. The music here goes for a feeling of environmental distress, setting up each area with tunes that make you feel alone, in danger, and ready to be killed at a moment's notice. Let's listen to a few seconds of it.
Before I say another word, temper your expectations here and get Metroid out your head. While it follows a few of that game's design choices, this feels very different in the way it looks, sounds, plays, and is narrated. And that's a very good thing because these differences allow this to stand on its own. Here, every enemy death means a chance you get stronger, more durable, making the gameplay feel almost like grinding an RPG. When you meet a boss that is absolutely wrecking you, go kill some enemies and level up your weapons and your suit. It really does help. The story and the flow of exploring the different areas was also nice. The survival horror vibe is seriously strong, and I really enjoyed the way it tells the story. I loved it when I came face to face with the zombified colonists and the other crazy creatures you meet up with. You aren't just alone because it's a single player game, you actually feel alone thanks to the atmosphere. It does have some hangups here and there that will need patience. You start out incredibly weak and killing anything can be frustrating. Avoiding enemies can help with this and you'll need to take your time until you level up your items and find new weapons like the grenade launcher and the flamethrower. The bosses are also damage sponges, and the combat with them amounts to little more than unloading everything you have on them before your life runs out. But I think the things it does well easily overshadows its issues. There isn't much like this on the Genesis, and anyone wanting to do some exploration while killing monsters should really appreciate that. As far as indie releases go, I don't think this did a bad job at all for what it was trying. Sci-fi horror in 16-bit form that actually makes you feel uneasy at times is a success in my book. The visuals could have used more color and detail, but the animation is solid. The music isn't something you'll listen to outside the game, but it pairs well with the environment you run around in. If you'd like to play this, there is a demo you can check out, and I'll put a link to it down in the description. If you are interested in picking this up as a physical cartridge, I'll put a link to that in the description as well. For those of you without a Genesis, this was also released on the PC with a vastly superior visual presentation. It looks like something you would have seen on the Saturn or PlayStation in fact. If Life on Mars interests you, Kai Magazine also has a new Genesis project in the pipeline called Life on Earth, an action game with cyberpunk influences that harken back to the likes of Snatcher and Blade Runner. You can pre-order that now and I'll link that in the description as well. I'd also like to take a moment and remind you guys to please support the developers if you want to play their games. I know it's really easy to download a ROM for free and not look back, but we aren't going to keep getting retro indie game releases by doing that. Support the developers if you want to experience their work, and if you feel the physical cartridge is too expensive, at least take a look at the digital only Steam edition. Pirating games that are 30 years old with no way to get them otherwise is one thing. Pirating games that are actively being made and sold today is just plain scummy. I'm Sega Lord X. Thank you guys for watching, and I will catch you next time.